Hello everyone, it's Barry here. Welcome to my virgin kitchen. Well, my part furnished kitchen. In a few weeks, I'll get some wall units and stuff. It's getting there, I promise. Uh, first of all, I hope you are well as always, but also happy birthday because I figured there's enough of us watching these videos now that there's a one in 365 chance that today is your birthday. So happy birthday, this video is for you. Uh, this is chocolate and pistachio macaroons. That's right, macaroons, not macarons, uh, which I made uh, quite recently. Uh, these were some Nutella ones, absolutely phenomenal. And macarons are actually slightly more trickier to make, uh, particularly if you try and make a giant one, which we did a few years ago, which was a flop, to be honest. But macaroons are so simple. You just dump it all in one bowl and you can completely go to town with all the fillings and the toppings and the flavorings. Mm, so we're going for chocolate and pistachio. Should we do it? Yes, we shall. The ingredients are super uh, minimal. In fact, uh, pistachios, you don't even need to use those either. Uh, I've got a vanilla pod. Uh, you could just use some vanilla extract. Uh, coconut, which is the main thing, gets kind of toasted. So good. Egg whites, a little bit of caster sugar, and some flour. And the only other thing is some chocolate that we melt on it towards the end. That is it, my friends. That is it. Also, on the last video, lots of you said, Barry, I can't believe you poured fat down your sink. I know that's a really bad thing to do, but I actually have a little fitting on the bottom of my sink that I twist and it actually collects the fat and then I chuck it away. Sorry, I should have said that. But more importantly, none of you picked up the fact that my flies were undone for a good portion of the video on the shorts I was wearing. Anyhow, macaroons. We're going to use the chopping board a little bit and what we need to do is get a little damp cloth. Uh, if we stick this down and our chopping board goes like that, it won't move. This is a vanilla pod and I'm just gonna uh, snip off the end. You could do all of this step with a knife, but I prefer, well, I actually just find it easier just to snip off the end, a little, little taily bit. Smells almost as vanilla as vanilla ice. I know that doesn't make sense, but just, just go with it. So what we do is take a sharp knife and push it into like the middle of this vanilla pod and scrape right down it, okay? Du -du 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 -du. And it kind of flattens out. And it's still a teeny bit butch, but it will work now. So what we'll do is get a more blunt knife, put it in one end like so, and just scrape all the way down like this. And can you see there? We've got loads of vanilla seeds. Okay, that's good. Obviously just putting in a teaspoon of vanilla extract is much quicker, but good flavor. Also with the same chopping board, we're getting a bag, Putting in our pistachios. It's about two tablespoons of those. And we're just bashing them up roughly. Okay, a plumber has just arrived in our house to alter a pipe. So uh, this recipe is going on hold for just a little bit. Once he's done, we'll come back to it. Sorry about that, uh, plumber's gone now, but there's a pipe that runs down there that we had to get moved back so Mrs. Barry can finally get a dishwasher. All right, so uh, bash those. We're gonna get ourselves our main mothership bowl. Add in the flour, the sugar, desiccated coconut, the vanilla pod, two egg whites, and just a handful of those bashed pistachios. Wooden spoon and mix it all together. In a minute, the hands are going in, folks. And at first, it's gonna look like it's not bonding at all, but we need to be persuasive. Yes, persuasive. Wedding ring's coming off. This is an absolute nightmare, uh, for when, especially when I'm doing a video recipe. Um, so just try and use one hand to be the bit that brings it all together. You'll probably find that uh, some of the dry bits at the bottom wanna hang there. So just really get your hand in there and bring it all together scraping up all of that dried coconut at the bottom that doesn't want to bond. See, that wants to bond like that, James Bond. Uh, that is a good macaroon mix, nice and clingy. The bowl is pretty much dry. I had to tuck Michael out of the way uh, in the corner there just while the plumber came in because I didn't want him to be like, uh, why does he have a, a cutout there? Incidentally, a lot of you wanted to see a Gordon Ramsay cutout. A few of you suggested Mr. Bean and I think that's what I'm gonna go for. Actually, a lot of that's all going to go to the new studio anyway, along with this big spinny wheel thing that I can't wait to show you. I don't know why I bought a spinny wheel, but it's cool. I've just preheated my oven to gas mark for 180C or 160C if you're using a fan oven, just like me. So while that is warming up, we're going to bring in this lined baking tray and make our macaroon mounds. So that would make a giant uh, macaroon anyway, which I know I'm probably going to get requests to do. But what we're going to do is take about a teaspoon of that, is it dough? I'm not gonna, no, it's not a dough, it's just uh, macaroni dough. Uh, just shape it into 
like a little ball shape like that. Just encourage it, plonk it down, and then we're just gonna repeat that over and over. Yeah, so about a heaped teaspoon like that. It's kind of rough, it's like a sort of gritty sand texture. Now I haven't looked, but I'm fairly certain someone has probably come up with rainbow uh, macaroons yet because dyeing coconut is super, super simple. You can do loads of different batches of colors with your food dye and then roll it together into one big tie dye ball. But we're better than that, people. Not much, but just a little bit. There we go, and I've got enough for about another six or so on a separate baking tray if I wish left over. There's your evidence. But you've got the flour in there to bond it, the meringue to give it that foamy lightness and also grip it too, the pistachios for the crunch, the sugar and the vanilla for that flavouring, and of course the coconut, which will toast in the oven, which is where it's gonna go as soon as the oven preheats. It also gets all over your hands, so give it a wash, otherwise it looks like you've got sticky rice fingers. <gasps> Oven's ready. And I'm married again, clean hands. All right, in they go. It's not gonna take long, maybe like 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, there's no point melting our chocolate for the finale yet because they need to cool down, so I'm gonna chill. I'm not gonna chill, I'm gonna do a shout out to a random Instagram follower. Boom. Sarah Parsons, Sazzy P underscore 23. This account is private. Good, because you're probably gonna get lots of people looking at it. You've got shades on, nice. Sorry, uh, that's how I just break our chocolate up for the giant food. Whenever we've got loads of chocolate to melt, just smash it down like that. Uh, this is a bowl where I'm just gonna melt the chocolate on 30 second blasts in the microwave. Of course, uh, I could do it bain marie method, but I don't feel like doing that today. And if you wanna be cheeky, you could add extra flavoring in the chocolate, like mint extract, orange, but we're gonna put those extra pistachios on top. Chocolate is lovely and melted now, so we're just gonna leave that to one side. I have a wire rack ready. It's time to get them out of the oven. So they will be slightly rounded with the shape we did, but if you wanna go for more of like a, a flat, uh, cookie kind of vibe, you just give it a bit more of a squish uh, when you put it on your tray. Let's go. Hello. Okay, so here we go. Out of the oven, nice and lightly golden brown. For some random reason, they've actually moved. That's kind of freaky, isn't it? But we're gonna get them over to a wire rack to fully cool down uh, once it's safe to do so and then we'll get the chocolate on. They actually cool down pretty quick to be fair, so I'm gonna use my baking tray to go under here to catch any excess chocolate. And you can do what you want with this now. Uh, you can do a chocolate drizzle, uh, like what I'm gonna do like this, sort of just like a zigzaggy thing. It's quite nice. You could maybe like dunk one half of it in there or you could even coat the whole thing in chocolate, which to be honest, is a chocoholic's dream. Ta-da! And just while that chocolate's still wet, I've got some more pistachio that I'm just bashed up a little bit more fine, so it's more like a kind of dust, I guess. That seems to be the trend thing to say at the moment. I've got some pistachio kernel dust. Uh, just sprinkle that on there and let it catch onto the chocolate to sort of grip it. Job done. Now all we've got to do is let the chocolate firm up. Here we go then folks, I'm really hoping for a lovely golden crunch with a softness in the middle. So uh, let's, let's have a try. Oh. Mmm. You've got that lovely soft coconutty middle and that golden brown crispy shell with the pistachio and the chocolate. I'm getting that real vanilla vibe in there too, so it's absolutely phenomenal. I really hope you give this recipe a go. If you do, don't forget to send me a picture at My Virgin Kitchen on any of your social media. In fact, loads of you guys have been trying out the nachos that I made the other day. It's really cool to see, so keep that coming. Don't forget to subscribe for regular recipes and food fun and check out loads more videos on the channel, aka a barathon, apparently, when you watch a load of my videos all in one go. So thanks very much, folks, for all the support. Let me know down below any recipes you want to see next, and I'll see you next time. These are stonking. My mind's telling me no. Mm -mm.